are these people? I do have one one more story that's fun. Wow, it's eleven fifteen. This is good, and then we're gonna get to to like a, a little route, quick quick around the world stuff, quick hits. So, uh, you know that I like I've been watching this cat Ian Carroll. We showed a couple of his videos, the one about the CIA girls, uh, Girl Squad, and there was another one I think we showed. This one I was really impressed with. Um, he talked about GameStop, and a lot of people don't really understand what what's going on with GameStop and what happened and why people are freaking out. And I think he does a really good video to kind of explain in 10 minutes what the hell's going on and which side we might want to be on and where he stands and why he understands what he does. So you can see this guy, Matt, says on a tweet, I can't believe games, this GameStop thing is still going on. Can someone please explain it to me? I love Ian and everything he stands for, but I literally have no idea what this is about or how one stock could have any real effect on impacting ultra wealthy people. I'm down to help in any way. Uh, I can just, I can just need to understand what's going on. So Ian says, I got you. And let's watch what Ian says. So this homie said, I can't believe this GameStop thing is still going on. Can someone explain it to me? I love Ian and everything he stands for, but I literally have Wait, I just no said idea that. what this is about or how one stock could have any real effect on impacting ultra wealthy people. I'm down to help. I just need to understand what's going on. I got you, Matt. I'm going to try to put it all into one video right now. I've made lots of videos about pieces of this, but I'm going to try to like actually explain the real thesis of what's going on and why GameStop very well could affect the entire market, bring down corrupt financial institutions on a big scale. But yeah, I got to put my hair up for this one. Okay. Don't get scared. I don't know why he had to show food. putting his when hair up. buy stocks normally, you're buying at a lower price and you're hoping it goes up so you can sell it and make some money, right? Well, there's no rule in the stock market that says you're not allowed to like borrow something from someone, right? So you're allowed to borrow shares from your homie. And if you borrow something, you're allowed to do what you want with it, right? Like I can borrow some shares and then sell them on the market right now. I just have to return them later to make sure that homie gets his shares back, right? So you're allowed to do this thing called short selling where you borrow some shares from whoever right now and you sell them at the market right now, hoping actually the price will go down. And then later you'll buy some and return them to your homie. And you actually make money because you return them for less money than you actually made when you sold them in the first place. So short selling is this thing where you can bet the market will go down and it's like taking out a loan. And when the market goes down, then you close out the loan and you make some money. You have to pay a little interest to keep that loan open, but you can make a lot of money doing that. Especially if you see a company that's like obviously gonna die because it's a failing business model and you wanna make some money while it dies. But you'd want to be really careful because if you have all these loans open and you're paying interest to keep your loans open, you're hoping the price goes down, but then it starts to go up a lot, you could lose a lot of money because you'd have to buy them all back at a higher price to pay back your loan and you had to pay interest to keep your loan open. And prices can go up infinitely, theoretically. So short selling is pretty dangerous and everyone knows that. And back in the 90s, all these rich people like at Bain Capital, like Mitt Romney, they realized that they can actually take companies down from the inside and basically loot a company from the inside, take all its money, give it to them and their buddies, the shareholders, and then bankrupt it and leave. And there's not really any consequences. You just buy into the company, buy a bunch of shares, get yourself on the board, take it over, start hiring people that'll do what you want, mismanage it, do a bunch of buybacks so the money gets paid back out to you and the shareholder buddies. And you can really just mismanage the company into the ground and basically loot it for all it's worth. And when it goes bankrupt, it's like, oh, well, whoopsies, it was destined to fail. We'll just move on to the next company, whatever, my mistake. And they made billions of dollars doing this to Toys R Us. And everyone else was looking around like, damn, yeah. that was a pretty solid strategy, Bain Capital. Maybe we could do that in some other broke. companies. And this was just after the dot-com bubble happened. And so there was this whole internet thing. Amazon was on the rise. And everyone kind of realized, like... I wanted to pause for a second. Because that's fucking crazy, first of all. And second of all, not only does the company go out of business, but the pension fund goes to the capital company somehow. Like, all the employees that worked for that company that went into business don't get the pension fund. It's unbelievable.
And oh yeah, they paid themselves hundreds of billions of dollars and hundreds of millions of dollars in fees, quote unquote, to manage these transactions and to run the, run these companies into the ground. You know, there's all these retail stores out there that are probably in big trouble, like Blockbuster and Sears and GameStop. You know, companies that are bound to fail. So why don't we make them fail faster and profit off of that? Plus, it turns out that these dudes that work at places like Bain Capital that can take these places down from the inside out, turns out they have a lot of friends in the market that like to short sell. And the thing about supply and demand is when I'm borrowing like thousands and thousands and thousands of shares and selling them into the market right now, all that selling actually makes the price of the stock go down. Because like when everyone's selling something, it gets valued less. But when everyone wants to buy something, the value goes up, right? So short selling actually makes a stock's price go down. And these guys realize that like, you know, you like to make money when stocks go down and I like to make money when companies get destroyed. And when we do those both at the same time, everybody wins, except the company, of course. And then it turned out they were like, hey, we both know a hmm. lot of people in the mainstream media that like to report on failing companies. You know, the kinds of reports that make investors scared and make them want to sell a stock. And they realized they kind of had the dream team for bankrupting companies and they could all make money on the way down and no one would ever stop them because it's kind of legal. And it actually started to work so well that they started to get really greedy and they started to naked short sell, which means like no one's checking if we're even borrowing these shares that we're borrowing in order to, in order to short sell. So why even borrow them? We can just short sell shares and say we borrowed them and the company's gonna go bankrupt anyways. And when it does go bankrupt, we don't even need to pay that loan back because there's no shares to give back. They're gone. And fun fact, I don't know how that's it's true. all tax-free money too because there's no tax company. free The shares are gone. Free money. So some of them got really greedy and started selling without even borrowing the shares in the first place. But we'll come back to that in just a second. Because the other thing that's Crazy. important to realize about the stock market is it's like this big casino game now. So it's not like the big boys aren't just playing with like a share of a company. They're playing with these things that are called derivatives, which is like leveraging your assets to take out loans to like make big plays, big gambles. So they use all these special kinds of contracts where like they put up collateral in order for their bank or whoever to let them trade on a whole bunch of extra money they don't really have, but they've got collateral. So if it starts to go sideways, the bank can just take their collateral right. and so, it's all safe. But like this way, I can trade with 100. Right, look at this. So this guy has $3 million in assets, but because he's got, he's able to trade up to almost $50 million worth, even though he's only got $3 million because of the way that these derivatives work times the money of what I actually have. It's called leverage. And all these different tricks, they're called derivatives. And they let these big players gamble with huge positions in the market. And so this now, when the stock moves by $1, they're leveraged 100X. And so if the stock goes up by $1, they can make like 100X $1. Or if the stock goes down, vice versa. And this derivatives market has gotten really big. Like, hundreds of trillions of dollars worth of these weird bets just all over the market. These are the top banks. It's like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, their names are over there. And this is in millions of dollars. So we're talking 49 million million dollars. That is 49 trillion, trillion dollars worth of these derivative bets open with just JP Morgan, the biggest bank. But the thing about these derivatives is they all have collateral backing them up, right? And the thing they use for collateral, they're not like you and me. It's not like they're putting up their car for collateral. They're putting up their other assets. So in over here, they're gonna be trading these assets on that collateral. And over here, they're trading the collateral on these assets. And so the whole market is now tied together by all these big financial institutions trading trillions of dollars worth of stocks that they don't actually have on leverage that's based on collateral that they're trading for trillions of dollars worth of stock over there. You see what I mean? So like if they fuck this one up, then that one gets fine. There's all these dudes doing this like kind of criminal shorting businesses out of existence scheme in the market in kind of in secret. And they've been targeting GameStop for years now. Ever since 2014, the stock was on this endless ramp down. They were short selling right. it while they had infiltrated it and were mismanaging the company from the inside out. 
Amazon was licking its lips ready to take over the video game online industry. And the people doing all this short selling also have all these other crazy bets open all over the market. And if any of them go wrong, a whole lot of things go wrong. And then out of nowhere, this random dude that would like live stream to four people about his investment thesis noticed that GameStop had a lot of short sellers and it wasn't necessarily a bad company. In fact, it had a future if it turned around. And then this really savvy businessman came and took over the company and started turning it around. And he kicked out all the bad people that had been trying to mismanage it to death. I and love the music. All the people that had just spent years and years short selling millions and millions of shares. And all those loans were still open because they were expecting it to go to zero and they wouldn't have to pay them back. Suddenly the price is going up and they're all in trouble. Because the thing is, when the price goes up and one of the other people that's short selling the company gets scared and closes out their trades, they have to buy all those shares back to get out of that, right? Because they borrowed and sold, so now I have to buy and give them back. But all that buying makes the price go up even higher. And there were a lot of people short selling this thing. And in fact, they had short sold it so much that they couldn't afford to buy it all back once the price started going up that high. I mean, it was down to like 50 cents and they were opening short sales at 50 cents. Today we're at what, $60 times millions and millions and millions of shares that you have to buy back. Each one will make the price go up and the whole stock market is tied together by- All right, he went a little fast there, but if you sold a short at 50 cents and the price is now $60, not only are you covering the interest, but you also now have to pay Fifty-nine fifty per share times millions of shares. The banks don't have this money, is what he's trying to say. By all these crazy financial yeah. derivatives and everyone's balance sheets are actually kind of yeah. sketchy in the first place. Yeah, and we all realize that all we have to do is buy the shares and just hold on to them because these guys need to buy them from us in order to close their trades out. Whoopsies. And Whoopsies. You know, the more we thought about it, the more we realized, no, nah, I don't really want to sell. Fuck you. So then they tried to trick us into thinking that they had already closed their positions and it was all over. And we were like, I'm pretty sure you're lying, dude. So we just held on for years. And it turns out we were right. Shorts never closed. And now we've all got the shares that they need in order to close. And you know, I still don't want to sell. Fuck you. <laughs> in another video, he goes, I'm not here to make money. I'm here to see motherfuckers go to jail. And that was like, it made me smile so big. And he wants to make money, of course, but what he wants to do is crash the entire market. And these GameStop guys that they use the R word to describe, the oh, Wall Street Bets said, guys. I can't believe this GameStop. Guy. All right. There was another video that I also liked. You know, that, that was tremendous. Tremendous. This guy does tremendous work. His, his mustache is annoying. His hair is whatever and i know anna and it's like what's with the mustache mm -hmm. i can't take it um well look at that they did a capitalism yeah not not a, well yes but this is beyond a capitalism this is literal market manipulation betting on companies to fail then making sure they did fail and taking all the money in the process love love to everybody that can help if you can't if you can't help, totally understand, watch, enjoy the content, share it, please, so that other people see it. Um, just like Kit, you know, if you can pick up a monthly subscription, awesome. You can one-time pay us and hook us up with some some cash. Amazing. Really appreciate it. But we do this, and we, we make all our content available for free. Everything we do. So, uh, love y'all. Support independent media. We need it more than ever. Thank you. I love you. And I will see you soon. Yeah. Bye, have a great time.